The Vitamin Bond Strength Test, BBS, is a simple, quick, and repeatable test for evaluating adhesion properties of asphalt aggregate systems. The BBS test is a significantly modified version of the original pneumatic adhesion tensile testing instrument, PADI, originally developed for the coating industry to measure the moisture susceptibility of asphalt binders. Evaluation of pullout tensile strength on different aggregate substrates can be used to evaluate asphalt aggregate compatibility. For asphalt binders, moisture damage evaluation is possible by observing the decrease in pullout tensile strength due to moisture conditioning. The BBS device is comprised of a portable pneumatic adhesion tester, a pressure hose connected to the air cylinder, a reaction plate, a piston, and a metal pullout stub. The pullout stub has a rough surface that can prevent asphalt debonding from the stub surface by providing mechanical interlock and a larger contact area between the asphalt binder and stub. In this diagram, you can see the dimensions of the BBS test pullout stub. The stub has a diameter of 20 millimeters with a surrounding edge used to control film thickness. The stub edge has a thickness of 800 micrometers. The air supply required for the BBS test should be capable of producing a consistent air pressure of at least 0.7 megapascal or 100 psi as read on the supply gauge. Self-contained air cylinders, shop air, or air from an automatic pump may be used. Before testing, air supply and pressure hose connection should be checked. Aggregate plates are cut with similar thickness and parallel top and bottom surfaces. After cutting and lapping, aggregate plates are immersed in deionized water in an ultrasonic cleaner with a sufficiently large tank to allow for complete submersion of substrates. It should be mentioned that the lapping is done to provide a control on the roughness of the surface. It is extremely important to have a smooth surface to remove the effect of interlocking on the bond strength. Substrates are submerged for 60 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius to remove any residue from the cutting process and neutralize the surface of aggregate to its original condition. After cleaning in the ultrasonic machine, the aggregate plates are heated in the oven at 60 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 30 minutes to remove absorbed water on the aggregate surface and provide a better bond between the asphalt binder and the aggregate. The surface of the pullout stubs is degreased with acetone to remove moisture and dust, which could affect adhesion. After cleaning with acetone, the pullout stubs are heated in the oven at 60 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 30 minutes to remove absorbed water on the stub surface. For asphalt binders, use a silicon mold measuring approximately 8 mm in diameter and 2 mm deep. The asphalt binder is heated in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius. Upon reaching the application temperature, pour 0.4 plus minus 0.05 grams of molten binder into the mold. To demold, cool the sample and mold for 15 minutes in laboratory conditions. If samples are not easily removed from the mold, refrigerate the samples for an additional 1 to 2 minutes before removing from the mold. The stubs are removed from the oven and an asphalt binder sample is placed immediately on the surface of the stub for approximately 10 seconds. Then the aggregate plate is removed from the oven and the stub with the asphalt sample is pressed into the aggregate surface firmly 
until the stub reaches the surface and no excess asphalt binder is observed to be flowing. The stubs need to be pushed down as straight as possible and twisting needs to be avoided to reduce the formation of trapped air bubbles inside the sample and to minimize stresses. Position binder samples on the substrate to allow for placement of multiple applications and for sufficient clearance of the testing apparatus. For wet conditioning, samples are first left at room temperature for one hour to allow for the aggregate binder stub system to reach a stable temperature. Then, samples are submerged into a water tank at 40 degrees Celsius for the specified conditioning time. After conditioning time is completed, samples are kept at room temperature for one hour before testing. For dry conditioning, samples are left at room temperature for 24 hours before testing. To initiate the software, the piston size should be set to F2 as seen on the reaction plate. The pullout stub diameter should be at 20 millimeters, while the custom size and custom weight of the pullout stub should be set to zero. This button should be clicked to collect data, and the file name extension should be changed from CSV to .txt. To calibrate the loading rate of the test, talc powder is first applied to the silicon gasket. The gasket is then placed inside the piston, and the reaction plate is placed on top of the piston. The piston and reaction plate assembly is then placed inside a clamp and clamped firmly. The test is started by clicking on the start test button, applying pressure, and then stop by clicking on the same button. The text file from the results is then opened in Excel and a portion of the loading data is selected and a linear trend line is applied to the data. The loading rate is the slope of this line, which should be equal to 100. If the loading rate is different, repeat the test after adjusting the flow rate of the machine. After loading rate calibration, the assembly is removed from the clamp. To run the test, place the ring support concentrically around the stub to reduce the possibility of eccentric loading. Carefully place the piston around the stubs and on the support ring without disturbing the stub or inducing unnecessary strain in the sample. Screw the reaction plate into the stub until the pressure plate just touches the piston. Unscrew the pressure plate one quarter of a turn to ensure a small gap between the pressure plate and the pressure ring. Test the samples using the adhesion testing device in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. Record conditions such as temperature and humidity for all tests. Record the maximum pullout tension and observe the failure mode. If more than 50% of the binder is removed from the substrate, the failure is adhesive. Otherwise, the failure is cohesive. For more information, please visit our website at www.uwmark.org.